tonight on Missing Persons Unit, the search for Alan Kennedy hots up. Someone's been camped here before. As family give DNA, police wonder, is this Alan's campsite? This gentleman here? A loving father goes on a last-minute spending spree. For a amount of camping gear, for supposedly for a son coming in from overseas. Then disappears, <laughs> leaving his family shattered. Grant, if you're watching, please come home. Also, a former Olympian goes missing. You know who your pals are, don't you, Ray? You know. You know the blokes who you love. In his corner, a giant of the sport pleads for help. If Ray's watching this, can you please report to the police and let them know that everything's OK? And what's happened to mentally disabled 17-year-old Emily Servos? She was putting money in the bank for him before jail, in jail and after jail. He's got an anger problem himself. Well, she's not safe. From every angle, she's not safe. Good morning, everybody. Morning. It's 8 a.m. And officers of the missing persons unit are sorting through their caseloads. Might start off with you, Liz. We've got a 17-year-old girl reported to Maribra Police Station. She has the mental capacity of a much younger person. Senior Constable Liz Sakluna gets the case of missing teenager Emily Servos. Emily has been living with her aunt since her mum passed away three months ago. And now she's in a relationship with a new boyfriend. The auntie's got real concerns for her welfare because she's heard them arguing over the um, missing person's disability pension. Oh, OK. It's a worrying one. Mm. Steve, we've got a 51-year-old man from the Hunter Valley. He's a courier by trade. Turned up at work the other day at 5am and he left half an hour later in an emotional state and no one's seen him since. Strange one. Steve McAllister is assigned the case of Grant Andrews. Grant, a devoted father, disappeared after going to work from his home near Newcastle. It's out of character and he hasn't gone missing before. All right, thanks. Gary and Doug are up in the Blue Mountains assisting with the search for Alan Kennedy. Doug McIntyre and Gary Bailey are still in searching for bushwalker Alan Kennedy, now missing for six weeks. After the search is finished, they're going to uh, meet up with the family and let's hope this case is resolved shortly. That's it from me. Have a great day. In the case of missing girl Emily Servos... Hello. Hello, is that Yvonne? Yes. Hi, Yvonne. It's Senior Constable Sakluna from the Missing Persons oh, yeah. Unit. Liz is calling oh, Emily's distressed aunt, Yvonne, who reported her missing. How long has it actually been since you've spoken to Emily? Um, five days today, and that was on the telephone, very briefly. Oh, OK. Yes. And what did she actually say? She just basically mumbled away, you know, that she's OK, don't worry about me. You know, she doesn't deal with her emotions at all. Emily, who's 17, is intellectually handicapped and has lived with her aunt since her mum passed away three months ago. I found a piece of paper in her bedroom, um, which was a visitor's thing for jail. Oh, OK. And it went so, well, to... like a min card or something? Yes, yes, something like that. He used to hassle her on the phone because she was putting money in the bank for him before jail, in jail and after jail. And even after her mum passed away, I definitely know she's with Daniel. OK, well, we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you very much. No problem. See you, see you bye. Yvonne. Bye-bye. It's believed she's with um, her boyfriend, uh, whose name is Daniel. Apparently, he's been in and out of jail. Um, and that's probably not the best thing for a 17-year-old who uh, has the mental capacity of a nine-year-old. At the same time, in the Blue Mountains... They just wandered up that gully, are they? ..the police and emergency services volunteers are still looking for missing granddad, Alan Kennedy. Yeah, we've just reached the furthest point in our search area. We'll, I'll just give you the grid coordinates. In our last program, the Missing Persons Unit launched a new search for Alan. He's 74 years old. He, his vehicle was found actually right here. Police found these glasses right near where he abandoned his car. Good find. The volunteers continued searching caves and along cliff tops. This could be a place to stay for a while. There is real concern that Alan may have planned his disappearance. At this point, we don't know um, whether there's a self-harm issue 
uh, with his, um, his gang missing. But today, on the edge of this remote cliff top, Nathan discovers this campsite. It looks like someone's provisions. We've got um, a billy and some plates. Obviously been here pre the fire. There's some coffee mugs and, and bowls. It's quite amazing that these plastic plates got through the heat of this fire. But are they Alan Kennedy's? I don't think uh, this fella brought anything with him. Yeah. Not to this extent. There's three or four coffee cups here. It sort of indicates that there might have been, might be a campsite, an old campsite for a few people, which might go back to why um, we've got this little stool on the on the cliff edge. It seems to me now, looking at it, there's definitely more than one person would have used it together. So I think we can probably discount it. Back in Sydney, police have hit the streets to look for Emily Servos. We're just on our way to Maroubra Police Station to speak with the supervisors there, just to do a bit of a changeover and find out what information they've received in the last 24 hours in relation to our missing person, Emily, the 17-year-old. Liz asked local police to look for Emily at her boyfriend Daniel's home. Police records confirm um, Daniel has done some time in jail. Uh, we sent a um, car crews around addresses in St Mays Hill and Canley Vale. Um, uh, they found that it was, she was never known to be at the address at Canley Vale and uh, there's still some inquiries at St Mays Hill. There, uh, it's a large unit block and we didn't have a unit number so we'll have to look into that a bit further. No problems. Now we'll have to um, ring back her next of kin and um, see if we can find out some friends she might be with. And I believe her mum passed away two that's, months ago as well. Yeah, that's correct. She, I don't think she's been dealing too well with that, so that could be some, some of the reasons she's uh, moved out that way and up with someone she may not, she shouldn't be with. OK, then. Thanks very much for your help, sir. You're right. See you later. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Nothing's come up with those addresses that um, they had gone to before. So we're just going to speak to the next of kin. We've got our photo and we're going to make some further inquiries. Liz and Steve now hope Emily's aunt Yvonne can give them more information on Emily and her boyfriend. She's a restless kid anyway because she's ADD. Um, and not capable of anything. I've had to stop work. She's been in my care 24 hours. There's times where I've given her a bit of space and let her go because she just feels restricted and just run. She just go all day and come back late afternoon. And running straight to Tony? boyfriend Daniel's unit. How did she meet Daniel? I have no idea. They kept in contact while he was in jail. I found all these letters. We've got to know a bit about him through these letters. Just, did she take any clothes with her or? Nothing at all. Just a handbag, which leads us to believe perhaps she wasn't ready to leave. Uh, she went to visit a an older lady. Uh, her name is Maria Buckworth. I do have a, an address, but I know that she basically went there, met Daniel, and off they went. So that's exactly where Steve heads to interview eyewitness Maria Buckworth. It's six hours after searching started around the remote Mount Hay area, right where Alan Kennedy once spread yep. his wife's ashes. Are you going to come up there or are you going to come back? But police are no closer to finding the missing grandfather. After this sort of exposure over this period of time, uh, particularly with the, the fires, it's made it easier for us to search um, these open areas with the fire having come through, but yes, um, any sort of identification or clothing would have been burned away as well. We'd be definitely looking for bones in this kind of burn area. Even though hope is fading, up on the top of Mount Hay, Doug's team pushes on. Okay, all moving. Mr Kennedy may have moved over towards a, a lookout or a vantage point on the side of the cliff here and come to grief out there, so we'll just sort of cover those areas. Across the valley, Gary's team knows it's time to finally call the search off. This should be our final sweep. I wouldn't say it would have come beyond here. Not in this terrain. Get everyone hydrated and, and then we'll get back up the top there and, and go back towards the command post.
Meanwhile, back on the case of Emily Servos... The missing person uh, may have attended an address in Mascot, so we're just going to attend that address and speak to her and see if we can find some more information. Liz and Steve are at Maria Buckworth's home, where Emily was last seen with her boyfriend. So when was the last time you actually saw Emily? Um, when did we last see Emily? Last week. Do you remember what day it was? No, I don't. The bloke she was with, is with, he told us, but he has, he's out on jail and he has weekends detention or something. Do you know who that person is? Uh, what's his name? Daniel. 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 Oh, okay. Daniel. Right here. How, so how do you know Daniel? Am I involved with all this? No. no, we're just trying to find out where she is. So because you've seen her, yeah. We're just hoping that you might have been able to give us a bit of information, like you, you might have had a new seen, number or something. Did you say you seen her? Yeah, she, she rang me up the other day. That would have been about yesterday. She yesterday she rang you? Yeah, on her mobile phone. And she goes... Um, what time did she ring yesterday? Oh, it would have been about 9 o'clock. In the morning? Yeah. 9 in the morning. About 9 o'clock. I said, where are you? And she didn't tell me. Did she ring you up on your home phone number? No, she rang me up from my... On your mobile? Yeah, she had a mobile as well, but did I... Did her phone number come up? Yeah, but I deleted it. I didn't know whose number you it was. You deleted it. Okay. Should have kept it, love. Okay, if you can give us a carrier you're with, we might be able to find you out her phone number. number. Too, but then the case becomes a lot more serious. What she's got is her mother's key card. Oh, she's got a mother's key card, has and she? She's trying to get my husband to get the money out of his key card, of her mother's key card. So who told you she actually has her mum? She showed us. She showed me oh. once. Oh. She showed her one day. So what's actually written on the key card? Just the mother's name. And she's got the pin number and she's got all the money in it. OK. So I reckon they might have been to me and take the money out of that. Well, right, thank you very much for your help. If Emily does have access to her deceased mother's account, she'll be even harder to find. The day's finally over for the men and women looking for Alan Kennedy. It's been seven hours of hard slog in the hot sun. Everyone is feeling it. Yeah. That last bit was hard. Yeah. I still sort of think that he'd be around here somewhere, you know, within a few hundred metres, because, you know, you don't forget the man's at 74 or something. That's right. Um, but we've done a really thorough search, and uh, I don't think there's anywhere we, where we went there. Water. Exhausted volunteers, all unsung heroes. They're on call 24 hours a day, and they do it for the love of the job. OK, we'll kick this off. Um, look, first and foremost, thank you very, very much for your, uh, your help. Uh, unfortunately, as you're no doubt aware, we didn't find uh, anything major. Uh, we have located some items that we'll, we'll uh, check out later on. The search was extremely thorough, which was just, just fantastic from our point of view, and I can now basically report back to the coroner if required to say that that's been done and been cleared 100% in the areas that we've checked. It might be over for the police rescue and the volunteers, but Doug and Gary still have one difficult task to complete. The next step, I guess, would be to obtain a, a DNA uh, sample. We'll go around to Madeline Kelly Juniors. Um, We'll get a swab off him, and then in the future, you know, if any remains are found here, well, then we could sort of uh, get them straight away, you know, and have them analysed, and uh, maybe they could give the family some closure. In the search for 17-year-old Emily Servos, it's been three months since her mum, Helen, died, and Liz and Steve want to know if Helen's key card is still being used. Well, I've actually cancelled. I, I went and gave them a death certificate at Centrelink, so yep. it all stopped. No, not at Centrelink. Oh. With the bank. At the bank. Oh, no. The information we got was that she may be... Um, she may have Helen's key card to that account. We, we don't know if that's true or not at this stage. Oh. But um, that's something for you to I look will. at and for us to look at as yeah, well. Yeah, sure, sure. So, I'll do yeah. Because I haven't spoken to Alyssa since yeah. last year. Okay. She helped herself to all her mum's stuff as well back then, you know. Right. And, yeah. and I knew there was no yeah. cards in there and that, but yeah. I didn't care because I didn't think my sister had money anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, yeah, find out if, if, 
if she did have any money other than the Centrelink yep, money yep. going into going that in. account. Okay, I will. I just feel failure here, like, you know, she, um, she was in my care and I've lost her and because and I know her so well, I just feel it's going to get worse from here because she's out there. Yeah. It's a character who's not safe for her. No. You know, if he's got an anger problem himself, well, she's not safe. From every angle, she's not safe. One of the worst jobs for officers of the Missing Persons Unit is delivering bad news. After a long, hard day tramping through dense bush, asking Alan's family for DNA will be even harder. Might be a little bit wobbly. The searches were uh, comprehensive and you know, sweeping. Yeah. Unfortunately, they were unable to locate your father. Um, yeah, so, um, what happens now? Probably the next step is now um, just to take a bugle swab. Yeah. Just, just, um, like a little spade thing, you just roll it on the side of your, inside the side of your gums. The reality is, collecting DNA often signals the end of any hope. The thing is, just you just got to sort of roll it both sides and it's really moist. Turn it over as well. The DNA will be stored to be compared against any remains found in the National Park where Alan went missing. Sadly, this family may never get closure. Alan Jr. may never know what happened to his dad. Oh, it's not the case at the moment, so hopefully we'll, we'll find him, find some news soon, catch him really soon. Twenty hours into the search for teenager Emily Servos, Steve and Liz arrive at the block of flats where her boyfriend Daniel lives. Yeah, gentlemen, how are you? Good. Hi. <laughs> From the, we're from the uh, missing persons unit. We're trying to uh, Fine. see if this. You've seen this girl before? Emily? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah. How long ago? An hour ago. An hour ago? An hour ago. Well, she's been right. staying here with Daniel the last couple of nights. Okay. Yeah. Um, but she's been alright. Yeah. Does she appear to be in, in good health yeah. and good spirits? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah? yeah. She was only just worried they'd use it on a locker up. And that's why the police who visited last night came up with nothing. What unit did she come from? Number seven. Number seven. Oh, yeah. oh, OK. So Daniel leases number seven off you, does he? Yeah, seven. How long's he been here? Six weeks. Mm. Since he got out of jail. And it, it's just him there, but she stays with him, is that right? She has been staying with him. Yeah, it's yeah. just they just start. missed them. So is there anywhere at all where we could possibly just and start? now, Liz has to convince these blokes that Emily is not in any trouble. We need to see her in person. Oh, you need to see her in person? Yeah, we need to see her in person. Yeah. Okay, right. All right? No so worries. then we can take her off being missing. But we are worried about her. Her family's worried about her. Because all we want to do is make sure she's safe. They didn't say where they were going. Yep. Okay. OK. Thank you. OK, then. Have a good one. And if they're lucky, they'll find Emily and her boyfriend at the local shops. Well, we've received some really good information. Um, basically, we've only just missed her by one hour, unfortunately. So we're going to take a, a drive up the main street and have a look at the local train station and see if we can find her. Meanwhile, back at the missing persons unit, Gary has returned from his search for Alan Kennedy and jumped straight into the breaking case of missing Olympic boxer Ray Perez. Hello, Joanne speaking. Yeah, Gary Bailey, missing person. Joanne, how are you going? Hi, good He's thing. calling Joanne, the manager of a nursing home where the 68-year-old former champ lives. Ray has a dementing illness. It's in particular, it's related to a very long boxing career that he had in the, uh, particularly in the 1950s, early 1960s. Ray competed in the 1956 Melbourne Olympics. In an era of die-hard fight fans, Ray was a hero. But beating world champions like Lionel Rose and Rocky Gattellari 
took its toll on Ray Perez. He can become um, a little aggressive. It's only if someone really gets into his face that he just starts to sort of front up a bit. Bit of a character, but sound of him. He's a real character. All right, Joanne, well, thank you very much for that. We'll, we'll okay. wander over and we'll see you shortly. He's an ex-boxer for many, many years. Uh, was quite uh, capable, apparently, in the band and weight division and um, won quite a few titles. And probably that's what's brought on a lot of this, uh, this dementia that he's suffering from now. You know, it's just old age, I suppose, too much boxing and things like that. That's why he's lost his, loses his memory from time to time. Back on the case for missing Olympian Ray Perez, Gary Bailey and John Wiling have arrived at the nursing home where the missing boxer lives. He's got a book upstairs in his room where he's got lists of people's names and things that he's, uh, that he's fought against. Today, the 68-year-old Golden Gloves contender suffers dementia, brought on by over 100 first-class fights. 56 kilos about now, is he? That's right. About five foot. He's only sort of a little fellow, isn't he? He's only a little fellow. And the police have sort of had not a lot of troubles with him. They sort of come across him, he sort of gladly comes back, does he? It depends how close they get to him. Sometimes what he'll do is he'll get into the old boxer thing yeah, and yeah. if they approach him too quickly or if they yeah. come too close to him, he can get a little, a little bit aggressive. Bit, yeah, yeah, I think it just scares him a little bit, so he yeah. sort of, you know, he goes to make a swipe. Yeah. And apart from, as I say, like he's got no sort of known relatives around here, just just sort of some, maybe some friends and that. He's got one friend who has minimal contact um, yeah. and he's got a sister who lives in Hawaii because he's originally from Hawaii. Yeah, and probably at the moment he'd have sort of minimal money on him if he had any. He'd have no money on him right now. No money. All right, Joanne, thank you very much for that. Picked up a photo uh, of Ray. I'm going to go down to the police station now. Um, we'll get that sort of scanned up, put it on our database, print up a couple of posters, and then we'll sort of... Uh, just poke on down the street, main street, check out the pubs and cafes and see if we can find him. As the search for Emily Servos intensifies... The name is Emily Servos. She's last seen wearing a blue floral print dress in the company of... Uh, the dad. Every officer in the area is now on the lookout for the 17-year-old. I'd just like to show you guys a photo and just if you could tell us if you've seen this person at all. Well, I haven't seen her again, no. no. OK, then. No problem. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks Sorry for your time. No worries. Okay. See you later. It's been a long, frustrating day of missed opportunities. My police have fears for her safety as she's a 17-year-old. Liz decides to go back to boyfriend Daniel's home again to see if Emily has returned. At the same time, in the search for missing boxer Ray Perez... Have you seen this bloke around at all? Yeah. He's a bit of a local. He's a bit of a local. Gary and John soon realise in these parts the pocket-sized pug is a real local character. Yeah, very nice guy. Yeah, yeah, very friendly. He used to live down here in the old folks' home and I think he, he just gets a bit... Confused about where he lives now. Yeah. Down. Bit of a local character by the sound yeah. of it. Everyone knows who he is. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope you find him. It's a bit worrying. Yeah. Uh, we're sure he's around here somewhere or in the city. Ray is also a keen punter, so Gary reckons someone at the TAB may have spotted him. How are you going? You wouldn't have seen this bloke uh, today at all, would you? One of the locals. Jeez, yeah. look, I haven't, look, I haven't seen him in three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. You know him though, obviously. Oh, yeah, Ray. Ray yeah. Everyone knows Ray. Yeah, I've got a photo of him. Did you know him from back in his fighting days? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good fighter, was he? Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. Oh. Sorry to interrupt the race, mate. Do you know Ray at all? Have you? You wouldn't have seen him. Yeah, of course. You wouldn't have seen him today. No, no, no. He's always in here. He's been missing since Friday, so a bit concerned about him. He's like a legend around here. <laughs> Legend or not, after four days on the streets, without food or money, everyone is getting even more concerned for the 68-year-old. Back at Emily's boyfriend's place, after two days of searching, Liz's hunch has paid off. Yeah, you can. So we're just going to want to have a chat with you, all right? Mate, they're right. Okay, they're with She's us. She's okay. Okay. Mate. She's okay. It's She's right. okay. It's She's with us. Be Emily. Okay? Move over there. Boyfriend right. Daniel is not happy. She's okay. Yeah. She's okay. Right. 
Because you're missing. You're not in any trouble. You're just missing. Okay. All right. All right. Just come over here and I'll have a chat with you. You're in no trouble at all. All right. Your auntie has been worried about you because she hasn't heard from you for five days. And all we are worried about is you. Okay. That's all we're worried about. Are you okay? Yeah. Depressed. You're depressed? Yeah. Well, I don't want to leave you here if you're depressed. Do you want some help? Cool. Counselling, mate? I'm doing counselling. Yeah? Who is? It might be um, much better. I'll ring you and say hello to him. Who, your to brother? Him. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea. She's going to be so pleased to hear from you. Nothing's happened to me. Yeah, but, but you, you know that, but they don't know that. Is that even? That's yeah, it's not senior counsel Steve McAllister. How are you? Oh, there's someone who wants to say hello to you. Hello. How are you? Huh? Police are hoping Emily's aunt, Yvonne, can get her to go home. OK. No. But no such luck. Thank you. So now it's up to Liz and Steve. We'll take you tonight if you want. You nice house, nice bed. You got any other clothes? Have a shower, have a drink, something to eat. Why would you want to stay out here, Emily? There's nothing out here for you. You've got everyone down there who love you and who just want you to come home and sit and have a chat with Yvonne and your brother. People that miss you and love you and that want you to come home. Take you there quite comfortably now. Police know that they can't force Emily to go with them. After to tomorrow, I'll be the one to. And this is just going to continue on and on. And that you're probably not going to get help. Especially if you're here. It's a delicate balancing act more. between what Emily wants and what Liz knows is best for her. So why don't we take you home? Why don't you come with us and get out of this heat? What do you say? And it's worked. But it's taken all of Liz's skill and patience to turn young Emily around. Very pleased that you're coming with us. I am so pleased, Emily. Seven days after she disappeared, the missing persons unit are bringing Emily Servos home to her aunt. You ready? Let's mm. go in. Right. You ready? Oh. Let's go. Let's go. Hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm so worried about you. <laughs> this is what Liz and Steve work towards every time they start a case. It's the most rewarding part of the job. Emily, we would really love you to, to go get some help, OK? I think that's what you need. You got my phone number? Yep. You can call me any time, like I said. All right? But don't forget what we spoke about in the car. All right? I'm just relieved that she's OK first. Um, and just having it back so quickly. I don't have to worry another day. I just, I'm still a bit shocked that she's here. Worth got express. <laughs> <laughs> was well, a fantastic result. We've uh, found her out at Canley Vale and we've brought her home to her auntie's place. Um, obviously, we're ecstatic. We're just so excited for the family and just so pleased that we've found her safe and well. Couldn't get a better finish um, to a young girl, take her out of uh, the place she was staying at and uh, get her back home into a great environment. Um, it's terrific. 
Across town, the police are still combing the streets for dementia sufferer Ray Perez. Well, up here you go. We're just sort of looking for this chap. I believe uh, he might be one of your customers. Yes, we know Ray. Ray, are you? Well. He's getting increasingly more doddering. Is he? Yeah. So, I mean, I walked him home 9.30 at night on Wednesday night last week. Sort of walked him, just had to tell him that, yes, you do live up here. And... Yeah, you're a nice lady for doing that. <laughs> oh, everyone does it. The elderly boxer has recently changed nursing homes, and that's maybe why he can't find his way home. So you know now that he's, or anyway, that he's missing and... Uh... You'll probably do the right thing and walk him home if he comes in. Yeah, <laughs> or we, give him a buzz or something. We do, we've got the phone number of the thing up underneath the phone, yeah. so just to call and let the staff know, and even at night, because we know that there's not many staff on, we always run him round. So. Yeah. Yeah. So Ray loves to wander and often catches buses into the city. And if he is in the CBD, he'll be much harder to find. He's out of his comfort level there. Not a lot of people would know him in there. So, uh, you know, uh, unless we can find him, um, he'll sort of stay there because it's not as if he's going to remember where he lives. So that's a concern now that no one knows him in there and there's no one to bring him home. Meanwhile, back at the Sydney Missing Persons Unit, after finding Emily Servos, Steve dives straight into his next case for missing father Grant Andrews. Yeah. Yes, go speak to uh, Tracy, please. He's calling Grant's invalid wife, who reported him missing yesterday. Grant got a phone call. Supposedly his father had had a heart attack. And we rang just to see what was going on. Grant's dad answered the phone, right. so we knew everybody was all right up there. OK. Now, yep. he's got access to uh, bank accounts, has he? Yes, he's got his own credit card. Yep. And he has what, who's that with? A uh, Newcastle permanent, okay. a credit card and a banking account with him, with them, and I know two thousand dollars is going in that account, mm. so we could buy medical equipment for me. Right. Okay. But Grant didn't buy the medical equipment for his disabled wife, so Steve rings his bank to ask if he's withdrawn the money. There was um, two thousand dollars taken out of his account yesterday. Yeah. And Grant's bank yeah. confirms the withdrawal. But where he is and what he's doing with the money is still a mystery. This case is uh, quite a worrying case. Like, um, we've got a gentleman um, in his 50s who's got a wife and kids, um, receives a phone call at work, says a story to a workmate and goes. Um, and no, no trace of him. Right down. Back on the hunt for missing boxer Ray Perez, Gary and John right to decide in. to check the local gym before they leave the area to search the CBD. Oh, yeah. there you go. The former boxer is a fixture around here, and Johnny Lewis, who trained Jeff Fennick, yeah. knows him well. You find him out five or six mile Oh, yeah. How long ago is that? That was in the 60s. He, he, he was famous for fights with um, Lionel Rose and Rocky Gattelari here. And, and he, he fought some great battles. Go the body, Jet. The guys in here might know how to pack a punch, but when it comes to one of their mates, they're all softies. You know, do you remember this little bloke? But he had the uh, heart of a heavyweight and the uh, heart of a bull. And, uh, but he was a great fella. He loved to be in his company. Just a beautiful person. The calibre of fighters that he fought were nothing but first class. He, he, was one of, he was one right out of the box. He won the gold medal and he said he brought it home to his dad and says the gold medal run for your dad. And his dad started crying. He that's what Ray told me, his dad started crying. And then he saw it and he saw, geez, my dad's proud of me. And he said, I am, son, I am proud of you. And that's exactly how these boys still feel about Ray Perez. Some of the boys have mentioned that he, that they've seen him, so everyone will keep a, a look out. And yeah, no, that'd be good, you know. He doesn't know where he is, who he is, or what, you know. It's terrible to go like that. Anybody that's seen Ray Perez around, I plead to them, I plead to them, to get in touch with somebody, somebody, some of his pals, who me. And we'll, anything we can do will help you. And you know who your pals are, don't you, Ray? You know. 
you know the blokes who you, you love. If there's anybody out there that in some way can help with the investigations to, uh, of finding Ray and uh, take him back where uh, medication and all that is waiting for him, and Ray himself, if Ray's watching this, can you please report to the police and let them know that everything's OK? Meanwhile, in their search for missing dad, Grant Andrews, Steve and Mandy are off to the Hunter Valley, north of Sydney, to meet his wife, Tracy. And there's been even more information from the bank. I found out that uh, he's actually accessed his uh, credit card and made a purchase at a camping store. It makes me sort of tend to think that he may just want to get away for a little while by the sounds of it now. But what is this one-time country singer and loving husband running away from? Steve is sure that Grant's wife, who's housebound with rheumatoid arthritis... Can we sit down and have a bit of a chat? ..will have some answers. Has he been any different in his moods? A bit stressed. A bit stressed? Stressed, yeah, over money and his job because right. there's a fear that his job could be gone. That's the only thing I know that's been worrying him is his job and money. Right. That's... All right, OK. Yeah. Now, has he got any favourite spots you know of? Uh, he loves the bush. Loves the bush? Loves the bush. That's the only, about the only thing I can tell you. The kids went up a mountain up here and had a bit of a look, but as the police officer from Toronto said, there are parts where the kids couldn't get to. Yeah, yeah. They were going to look at that. I honestly don't know. He right. sounded fine. He was fine when he went to bed Sunday night. Yep. I don't know. I honestly do not know. And he's not the type of person just to do this. Yep. So whatever's worrying him, it's something big, big. because he yeah. just would not pack up and leave his kids yeah. and me. And... Steve and Mandy are heading to a camping store where Grant Andrews bought equipment less than 24 hours earlier. I'm hoping that he needs a bit of time out. He seems to have a couple of worries. There seems to be a bit of financial uh, worry um, about his work as well, because they're talking possibly about closing down the Newcastle depot. Um, and plus, Tracy's ill, and he's probably taken that burden on as well. Steve is hoping Grant told someone where he might be heading. We're chasing up a missing person. Mm -hmm. This gentleman here? Face Vader rings a bell, yes, for a mount of hiking gear, camping gear, for a son coming in from overseas. Right, OK. Would you have a list of what it was? I would have a list, yes. yes. Oh, yes we'll have a look at that. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. The problem is, Grant Andrews doesn't have a son. So he just said gear was for his son. He didn't Correct. give in any indication where he's going? No, he didn't know. Okay. He purchased. Uh, basically, a 65 litre or 60 litre travel pack or hike pack. Right, yeah. A uh, lightweight sleeping bag, a uh, three person dome tent, a, a billy for boiling water in over a fire, a lightweight oh, nest okay. kit, and a little water bottle. Okay. So, all lightweight type items. Who is it, sorry? So, general car camping rather than actual oh, hiking. Yeah. Okay, yep. And that's far too much gear to carry on a hiking trip. Is, you think he's living out of his car or close to his car? Yeah. That's going to yeah. be the key thing, isn't it, to find the car? Yep. It's now day two in the search for missing Olympian Ray Perez. And for Gary and John, there is finally some great news. The 68-year-old former Olympic flyweight is back home and fighting fit. He was down at the local pub last night and we had a call from the local pub and that people around this area know him and they just bring him back to us. So he was just around my car. What sort of state was he in? Was he filthy or clean or looked like he'd he been was, looked after? Yeah, he's a bit dirty but a bit tired and, you know, he, I think he wanders around a lot on his own, so... Yeah. But he's always happy to come back and have his shower. I suppose he would have woofed into a big feed too, did he? Yeah, he gets his dinner and breakfast and everything. Anything he wants. <laughs> All right, we'll go and see him then, OK? OK, thanks. Hello. How are you going? Hello, right, pretty good. Gary Bailey for the Missing Persons Unit. Missing Persons? Yeah. Why, I wasn't missing. They, yeah, well, um... I went for a minimum walk and they thought I had disappeared. Oh, God. Everything's all right, that's yeah. why I'm with you, you know. You feeling all right? I feel OK, I'm not... Yeah? 
Well, I think I'm mentally all right. I don't think I'm too bad. Well, I think I'm worrying about it. I'm not a little kid. I know where I'm going. I know where I am and all of that. That might be so, but because of his dementia, Ray forgets things. Because you don't know where I am and you don't know if I'm hurt. Or like where he lives. But the main thing is, mate, you will. You know, we were really, really starting to get worried about you. One thing about me, I don't drink, I don't smoke. Yeah. Don't take drugs, or don't touch anything. Only I love beautiful women. Beautiful women follow me with a mattress on their back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, only joke. Uh, I'm only joke. Anyway, it's great news. Uh, you're well and will be in Thanks contact. You look after yourself and you take it easy, much. See you later. Okay, mate. We'll be in touch. Okay, good. Good on you. He's in good physical condition. He's, uh, his biggest problem, though, is his dementia. But it's really good, you know, that we've got him home and just hope we can keep him there. Meanwhile, at a police station on the New South Wales north coast, Steve and Mandy are meeting with Inspector Don Roberts. There's a few few concerns with uh, Grant. By the message on the mobile phone, it, uh, the mobile phone switched off. Um, it does assist us with triangulation to try and find it. Triangulation's out, no. Yeah. That was a big concern. But then when there's the carload of new map, camping equipment. This is uh, Dungong Forestry. So if police Forest patrols the find the car, yep. there's a good chance um, they'll find Grant. The first thing you have to do is circulate the car yeah. so everyone's aware of the, the vehicle. Yeah. Meanwhile, back at home, Grant's invalid wife, Tracy, fears the responsibility of looking after her and their three children may have pushed Grant over the edge. It's hard for the kids, because, I mean, you know, they love their dad. They've never had a reason not to, you know, he's a good dad. He's never done anything like this to him before, ever. You know, so the whole world's just upside down. So, you know, how do you explain that to a 12-year-old? Grant, if you're watching, please come home. Every year, over 30,000 people go missing. Have you seen 15-year-old Bianca Sharp, who disappeared from Orange, New South Wales, in 2006? Or 30-year-old Damien Couchy, missing from Adelaide in 1998? And 61-year-old Wendy Dalla, last seen in the ACT in 1975? If you have any information, please call 1-800-333-000.